Hello friends, this video on morphology of flowering plants part 32 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now we will look at the structure of a dicot seed and a monocot seed. Because the structure of a dicot and monocot seed are different due to the difference in the number of seed leaves. So let us first look at a dicot seed. So from outside a dicot seed will look somewhat like this as you can see in this picture. It has a seed coat, a hilum, a micropyle. So what is a seed coat? Seed coat is the outer layer. Now even in seed coat, we have two different layers. So one seed coat is actually made up of two layers. The outer layer is called testa. The inner layer is called tegmen. The outer layer is thicker. So it is thick outer layer and the thin inner layer is tegmen. So seed coat is made up of two layers. Outer one is testa, inner one is tegmen. Now it is difficult to separate testa and tegmen. tegmen. I mean they are so closely attached to each other that you actually cannot separate out the testa layer and the tegmen layer. However, seed coat can be removed if they are soaked in water for some time. In some of the seeds, if you soak them in water for a long time, it becomes easy to remove the seed coat. But what is the disadvantage of removing the seed coat? The purpose of seed coat is protection to the embryo. It actually encloses or it actually houses the embryo inside. So if you remove the seed coat, it is like the embryo is exposed. So it might, the embryo might get damaged due to some external issues. Like why do we stay inside a house? Because the house gives us protection. Similarly, the seed coat gives protection to the embryo. Now, again, some of the types cotyledonous seeds are endospermic while others are non-endospermic. Let us next talk about hilum. Now, hilum is a scar on the seed coat through which seed was attached to the food. So, if you see here, you can see a mark here, right? So, this mark is nothing but a point where the seed was attached to the fruit. The seed was what earlier? Before it was ovule. So, that ovule was attached to what before? It was attached to the ovary. So, there would have been a point where the ovules were attached to the ovary. You remember we talked about placentation. So, placenta was the tissue which connected the ovules to the ovary. Right? So, even when that ovule is matured into a seed and the ovary matured into a fruit, there was a point where the seed was attached to the fruit. So, that point is this scar which you see on the seed coat. So, this scar is known as hilum. And what is micropyle? Micropyle is a small pore above hilum. So, here you can see a small pole like structure which you see that is known as micropyle. So, seed coat, hilum and micropyle are some of the important parts of a seed. Other than that, the next important part is cotyledon. So, that was externally. So, externally you can see the seed coat, you can see the hilum, you can see the micropyle. In the, inside that you see the embryo and the embryo is made up of cotyledons, radical and plimule. So, what is cotyledon? They are nothing but the seed leaves. They are used for food storage because the embryo needs food. So primarily embryo gets some of the food from the endosperm. And after that the cotyledons or the leaves they store the food. So that they can keep on getting the food. It provides nourishment to the developing radical and plimule. Because for the radical to become a big root system and a plimule to become a big shoot system they need a lot of energy. That energy comes from food and that food is provided by the cotyledons. So radical is nothing but the embryonic root which later grows into a root. Plimule is nothing but embryonic shoot which again later grows into, a, into the shoot system. So these are the different parts of a dicotyledonous seed. Right? So it, it is very simple. Outside you have a seed coat which is made up of two layers, testa and tegmen. You also have a small scar like structure called hilum, which shows that where the seed was attached to the fruit. Just below the, uh, just above that you have a small pore called micropyle. Looking inside you have an embryo which is made up of two cotyledons, one plimule and one radical. So it is not a very complex structure. 
So now let us talk about the structure of a monocotyledon seed. For example, a maize seed. So maize is an example of a monocot seed. So how would this seed look like? So here also we will have a seed coat. So here in this picture we have, I have actually shown the longitudinal view of a seed. This is the longitudinal view of the seed and this is how an entire maize grain would look like. So the first part is again obviously the seed coat that is the outermost layer. So this layer is the seed coat. Again it is nothing but a covering and it ensures, it will ensure protection. The next part is the endosperm. So what is endosperm? This entire portion inside which is the endosperm. So by now you also know what is endosperm. Third part is an alluron layer. So this is a special layer which is seen here. So this layer which you see here just after the seed coat inside you see one layer right? So, this layer is nothing but the alluron layer. So, let us talk about each of them one by one. Seed coat is fused with pericarp. Pericarp is nothing but the fruit wall. So, now the seed is present inside the fruit. So, that in intern, in the internal wall of the pericarp, that is the endocarp, endocarp and seed coat will almost be like fused to each other. So where endocarp ends, there the seed coat starts. It is something like that. Talking about endosperm, it is the bulky part within which lies the small embryo. So the in, inside the seed, you, you have seed coat outside, then inside you have the embryo. But everything else except that embryo is filled with endosperm. It, it is the bulkiest part it, which is laden with food. It is massive and starchy endosperm. So this massive and starchy endosperm will actually provide all the food and that is why the endosperm is actually digested and absorbed by the embryo. So a time comes when all that massive portion is actually absorbed by the embryo itself and the embryo grows into a new plant altogether. Next is the alluron layer. It is a special tissue surrounding the endosperm. So if you see this is the endosperm right this entire thing. So this tissue which surrounds the endosperm is the alluron layer. So it is a special tissue. So this alluron layer, it consists of this, these tissues are made up of cells which contain proteins and these proteins play a very important role in germination. That is when the, what is germination? The process when a seed grows into a plant. So in that process also the cells of these layer helps. The next part is the cotyledon. So again cotyledon is nothing but the seed leaf. So it is a single cotyledon which is also known as scutellum. So where do you see the cotyledon? So this is the cotyledon, this portion. So basically this is the scutellum. So since it is just single cotyledon, it is named as scutellum. In contact with endosperm through an epithelial layer. So this, this is endosperm, right? So if you see endosperm and cotyledon, they are connected to each other through an epithelial layer. So here you can see a layer. This layer is the epithelial layer. So this layer is the epithelial layer. Then, so now this entire portion is basically the embryo. So in the embryo, you have the cotyledon, you will have the plimule. So where do we have the plimule? This portion is the plimule. That is the embryonic shoot. So it is covered by a protective layer called coleoptile. So if you see, this is the plimule and the plimule is covered by some layer of tissue. So this layer of tissue is known as coleoptile. 
right? I'm not writing the names completely because there is no space here. Similarly, you have a radical and it is also covered by a protective layer called coloresa. So this is the radical. This is radical and this is the protective layer of the radical called coloresa. Coloresa. Right? So basically, if you look at the structure of whether it is a dicot seed or a monocot seed, in both the cases, you have one seed coat, inside the seed coat, you have endosperm, and then you have the embryo. Inside embryo, you have cotyledon, primule, and radical. It is just that in a monocot seed, there is some additional protective layers present, like the alluron layer, like the coleoptile for the primule, and the coleoresa for the radical. Now, please understand this uh, uh, structure of the seeds very uh, properly because it, it becomes it is very very important not only for your understanding but also your examination point of view. They often ask you to draw a label diagram for of a monocot seed or a dicot seed. So you should be clear with the structure. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.